Hi, my name is Sean Jones, and I work at Los Alamos National Laboratory with Martin Klein as a member of the Research Library Prototyping Team. Martin is my boss. I'm also a PhD student at Old Dominion University, where I'm a member of the Web Science and Digital Libraries Research Group, led by Michael Nelson and Michelle Weigel. And I'd like to thank the IMLS for funding in part this research because we produced two very interesting tools that we're, we're hoping you'll find to be useful. Because we're going to be talking about Memento Embed and Raintail for web archive storytelling. Now, storytelling with web archives has multiple use cases. Uh, one could use storytelling to promote your collection. You can select particular, particularly interesting documents and, and visualize them with storytelling, making others aware of what's in there. Um, storytelling with web archives allows users to experience aspects of the collection. An archivist can select specific mementos in order to expose uh, one particular side or both sides of a story or focus on specific people or time period or something like that. And finally, storytelling with web archives can be used for summarization because web archive collections consist of thousands of documents and some of them it consists of hundreds of thousands of documents. And this is too much for one person to really grasp. And so in order to try to save them time and give them an idea of the gist of the collection through summarization, we can use storytelling as, as, as that particular visualization. Now surrogates provide a visual summary of the content behind a URI. Now I captured this URI at the top in 2000, 2017. And unless you're familiar with Google Maps around that time period, you're probably not really sure what this means. But if we represent the document behind this URI, as a browser thumbnail, we can see it's a map. On the left, browser thumbnail is just a screenshot of what the, the page looks like. And this gives the user some idea of what is on that page. Now, if we represent the URI as a social card, as we do on the right, we can see that it provides directions from Old Dominion University to Los Alamos National Laboratory. And it also provides us an image and lets us know that it's from google.com and you know some other information. And this particular card was produced by Facebook. So this provides us a summary of the underlying content. So we, don't, we can decide whether or not we want to click on this URI. Now, social media storytelling uses groups of surrogates to provide a summary of summaries. Each social card summarizes a web resource. Each story groups the social cards, summarizing the topic. Now, social cards contain the same information in the same place on each card, allowing users to easily compare titles and images between documents. Now, let's go back through that again. Each social card, each surrogate summarizes one resource. But if we group the surrogates together, we can summarize a whole topic, much like we have the Boston Marathon bombing here on the left and the Rohingya crisis here on the right. We can convey an overall idea with these individual small summaries. And we want to use this technique to summarize web archive collections because users are already familiar with this paradigm. We Wakelet does this. We see this in Google News. We see this in our search results. There's all kinds of different uses of surrogates. So people are already familiar with how this works. Now, telling a story with mementos has three basic steps. One, we select the pages for, for the story. Now, we can do it automatically with a tool like Hypercane, or we could have people or an individual do this by, by manually selecting pages for the story. Second, we gather information to summarize each memento, and we use Memento Embed for that. Third, we summarize all mementos together, and then we publish the story with a tool like Raintail. Now, existing social media platforms don't reliably produce surrogates for mementos. We went through some 60-plus uh, services to try to figure out which ones would be a good target um, for, uh, for telling stories and StoryGraph was going away. So we needed something 
And we found out that so many of these cannot reliably produce cards or any type of surrogate for Memento. And if, if they can't do that, then we would have to do so on our own. And if we're going to do that, we might as well make a service to do it. And some services have stories, but not long-term storytelling, like Facebook stories or Snapchat stories. The problem with these stories is that they disappear after 24 hours. And one of the things we want to be able to do is preserve the stories that we create. So this is the opposite of what we're looking for. We want the stories to be their own documents, thus describing the collection, something that someone could look at in, in, in the future, not after 24 hours, or definitely after 24 hours have gone by. And existing card services like Embedly or Embed Rocks create a confusing experience for pages from web archives. As we see on the right, Embed Rocks doesn't even get the encoding right for some reason for, for one of the words, but it, does, it can't find the image and it's, it does a poor job. But on the left, Embedly seems to do a much better job with this same memento from Archive It. You know it's about Egypt. It provides a very nice uh, description, and it pulls in a very wonderful image that really conveys what this, this memento is about. But it simultaneously attributes the memento to CNN and archive it. You can read the article on wayback.archivit.org, but it's got the CNN logo. And so this is confusing. Anyone who's looking at your story or who looks at this card in a blog post is going to wonder about whether or not this is a real CNN story. And they'll wonder, is the author sharing fake news? So neither social media services nor card services were reliable for web archive storytelling. Thus, we created Memento Embed. Now, Memento Embed is an archive-aware surrogate service. It can locate information about the Memento that is not available on other cards. And it can do this because it knows about archives and how they work. It uses the Memento protocol and other information to try to find information about the archive and separate it from information from the content of the Memento and thus avoiding issues of confusion about attribution and also providing information about where this is preserved and giving users some idea that, yes, this is in a web archive, and they can go and visit that archive and see other mementos. In addition, they can see the memento date time, when it was preserved, and it, it, you, you get the correct fav icon of, uh, and other things. It's... This is what Memento Embed is all about. And so we can summarize individual pages with Memento Embed. The Memento Embed interface uh, is, is a form, as you can see on the left. And on the right, we have five different surrogates that all represent the same page about the Egyptian Revolution. You have cards, like I showed you on the last page. There are browser thumbnails, which I showed you an example of before. There are image reels. Now, these are animated GIFs where Memento Embed has ranked the images based off a variety of features and scored them and then taken the top five and produced an animated GIF of the images of the top images that are in the Memento. And so it gives you more of an idea than just a simple card or a thumbnail. And in the middle, we have word clouds, which are standard. I mean, we were, all, we're pretty familiar with word clouds. And then on the right, we, we extended the image reel idea. Instead of just pulling the top five images, we also pull the top five sentences. Now, this is experimental. You see that the sentence extraction is imperfect. But doc reels provide a way to take a memento and summarize it and then post it to something like Twitter and take advantage of the, um, or not take advantage of, but actually overcome the space limitation in terms of a uh, number of, of characters. Now, Memento Embed has an API, and its API provides titles and text snippets. 
in JSON. You basically query it via HTTP and you can get back JSON on particular information from the memento. Um, it can provide paragraph and sentence ranking, which it needed to do for the image reel, for the doc reels. Uh, it does image analysis and scoring, which it, it uses in order to try to find striking images. Um, it provides thumbnails and in, in image reels and word clouds and doc. You can produce the surrogates themselves directly via the API. It also provides seed metadata if present. And you can get information on original resource fav icons, domains, URIs, and the current link status. And finally, it can provide information on meta tag content because it, it looks at that content in order to try to find titles, text snippets, and striking images anyway. Now, Memento Embed does some other interesting things that, um, that we go into in more detail in the tech report in order to try to find the original resource fav icon at the time of the Memento, if possible. So there's a lot of magic in here in order to produce these surrogates. Now, Memento Embed produ just produces cards and information for individual pages. So we created Braintail to tell stories. So Raintail is just a client of Memento Embed's API. Raintail generates file output or can publish content to services like Twitter. Now, it takes a text file consisting of the URLs for a story. And this file could be generated by Hypercane or could be generated by you. You can manually select the Memento URLs and just use them to generate a Raintail story. And we can publish many Mementos with Raintail in a variety of formats. We can publish them to Twitter with Twitter threads. And we can use screenshots and or, uh, browser thumbnails and images and titles and dates and links. We can publish to GitHub pages with cards and, and, and summaries and entities and, and, and more information that can be produced and put into your story. Or we can produce, and this is experimental, we can produce videos. And this, this further takes the idea of the doc reel and extends it to an overall collection. And so we can look at this Occupy Wall Street collection and see not just the sentences and images from one memento, but several. And we get an idea of what the collection's about. And the, the goal again here is to be able to take this video and use it in a Twitter post or use it in YouTube. Thus, one could just post this and convey the information about the story. Now, Raintail can do this because it's a client, again, of Memento Embed's API. So in order to use Raintail, a user submits a list of URMs in a template. And then Raintail consults the template to request specific information about each URM from the Memento Embed API. And then with the Memento protocol, Memento Embed retrieves the information that Raintail requested from the various Memento compliant archives and returns this information to Raintail so that it can then render the data based on the designated template. And then it can publish it to the file system or social media or whatever it is that you requested. Now Raintail uses templates to let you customize the look and destination media of your story. So we can have Memento embed cards and Blogger, we can use the template engine to produce our own tweets with our own information in a Twitter thread. We could extract components and then produce media wiki pages. Or we can do this, this template like I'm showing on the right from the fictional My Archive, which allows one to render a template with branding and the particular components you want. In this case, it's kind of a kitchen sink example with multiple images and browser thumbnails and all kinds of information. And with Raintail templates, the story can contain more than just cards. As I alluded to before, you've got, you can use browser thumbnails. This is an example of a Raintail template on the left where you can include 
a variable for the title, which you can specify on the command line. You can uh, provide a variable for how the story was generated or who, or who it was generated by. The collection URI in the case of Archivic collections or any other collections that you might want to support. Now we see as we go further down, there's a for loop and it's testing whether or not the element a type for the story is of type link, which indicates that, hey, this is a memento. So please go ahead and produce some sort of surrogate from it based off of the variables that I'm going to list next. And so next we see this TD with element.surrogate.urim, which indicates that we're supposed to put that URIM for that particular memento into the link. And you see image source equals and then element.surrogate.thumbnail telling Raintail to put a thumbnail as the target of the link. We also have preferences that are available with Raintail. We're, in this case, we're asking Memento Embed to remove the banner from the Memento that was placed there by the archive, which doesn't work with all, our, all archives. But, and thus we get a nice story full of thumbnails of the individual pages representing this collection. But it wasn't done with cards and wasn't done with some of the other methods, but it was done as directed by the template. Now, Raintail maps the variables I, I talked about from the template to Memento Embed API endpoints in order to generate data. So Raintail first goes through the template, finds all of the variables, and then maps them to Memento Embed API endpoints. If they, ha or if they start with element.surrogate. Then it uses this mapping in concert with a story file, a list of mementos. And as it's iterating through the story file, it, per it appends that, those URIMs for that story, that story file, to these Memento Embed API endpoints. And thus, it then is able to query those endpoints, get the information about the individual mementos that was requested. And then as we see at the bottom here, we have the Memento Embed API JSON response, where we were asking for element.surrogate.title, so we grab the title and then replace it inside the two H3s in the HTML for step three thus producing an HTML file from a template. Now in the future, we want to extend Memento Embed to include more summarization algorithms, things like LexRank or Lund's algorithm or Edmondson's or some of the others listed here. Now the truth is that not all mementos contain metadata instructing Memento Embed on what description should be used in the card. In fact, it's the target of current research to try to figure out how prevalent this is. And if we go back further in time before that metadata was specified, we also have a number of mementos that do not have this information. So we have to use some sort of summarization algorithm to generate the little text description in the card. We also want to allow clients to specify which boilerplate removal method they might use in order to process the text so that they could get better results with things like doc reels. And we want to allow users to upload their own surrogate template, much like we allow people to do with Raintail, thus producing their own surrogates one at a time for blog posts or whatever. Now with Raintail, we might also support other web archiving services that provide memento information like carbon date or archival fixity or memento damage. The idea could be that Raintail could become more of a general purpose storytelling tool that pulls in information from a variety of web archiving services. We also don't have a GUI for Raintail. It's a command line application which allows it to be used in scripts and, uh, and, and as part of uh, archival workflows and all kinds of other neat things, but it 
is not as user-friendly as it could be or as it would be with a GUI. We also have looked into direct publishing to Blogger, GitHub, MediaWiki, Instagram, Tumblr, and Pinterest with varying degrees of success, but they're not included in the main retail project at this time. And we've considered other output formats besides HTML and MediaWiki, something like PowerPoint or PDF. Raintail is supposed to tell stories. It do, they don't necessarily have to be web stories. You could summarize an archivic collection, print it out, and hand it to someone. So for more information on the Dark and Stormy Archives project, I invite you to click on some of these links. We have links for Raintail, including its documentation and where to report issues. The same for Memento Embed. And we recently published a tech report to archive it, describing all of this in far more detail. Thank you.